We begin tonight with some serious allegations from Sports Illustrated against the OSU football program. Challenge Rick Pendergram joined us now live. Rick, we had heard SI was coming out with some pretty hard hitting articles about the program. What are they accused of doing? Welcome back to more in our coverage of disaster at home. Let me tell you where we are right now, right behind and a little bit to our right, your left, is the uh, medical center that was demolished. Basically, it was a two-story down to one story now. And a lot of the uh, medical buildings and maybe a parking garage behind us now just in ruin. I remember my first first pitch. It was 30 years ago, and I did what Coach Blankenship said never do. It dribbled up oh, there. No. So I learned from then on, if you're going to throw it wild, over the head <laughs> right, of the catcher. Right. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. First on a Brady Street could see some big changes coming its way. Tulsa Organization Protecting Families in Violent Situations need your help tonight. Tonight we're getting a better look at that massive sinkhole that swallowed a man inside his Florida home. Each candidate has only two minutes to answer the question. Do you think that's going to be tough? I think so too. So my job is to keep them on track. We're going to go to the Rob Wallace campaign in just a moment. Also, we're going to talk about District 1, Congress here in Oklahoma. And the mercury keeps dropping. <laughs> Chief Meteorologist Jennifer Zeppelin. Are you laughing there? In the <laughs> it's storm crazy, center with right? The we're all well, laughing am, about I'm this, going, aren't we? Okay, is it April 1st? <laughs> and, and you can tell where the uh, the tornado skipped over and went over some trees the tops of the trees are off but the houses are fine we're going to stay on top of this we'll come back to this in just a second but the other big story of course is the weather sadness has gripped this osu campus as the university pays tribute and honors those killed in last week's plane crash there's nothing like a snow cone on a hot summer day and the hotter it gets <laughs> The more people crave one. Mm, that's good. Tulsa's own Sonny Lee from radio station KBOO has been on the red carpet for the preparations and the award. Always is the, a party. Uh, the South Sider pizza right here and Casey. the Bob Marley dip. It's excellent. You can't beat it yeah. whatsoever. Tonight we're going to be giving away t-shirts yeah. on that t-shirt right Love there. That. It could be a lot worse and probably will be a lot worse <laughs> tomorrow when this cold freeze comes in. Yeah, I'm going to be bundled <laughs> tomorrow and inside. That is for we'll sure. We'll have gloves on. We'll have our heavy coats on. Looking for a DD. Are you DD? I'm an battling the, <laughs> the umbrella here. If you can see what so uh, what we see here, <laughs> yeah, I think the sun just came. No, that's one of our lights. Here. <laughs> Whoa! No one told me they were going to be kicking. Hey, we have until midnight to get it back, right? right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, Wait, oh you know, uh -uh. Uh -uh. No, you can't get away with that. You finally have your bond. It matches your tie. If you all have this is the second annual parade right before the home opener for the Tulsa Drillers. You saw a lot of um, little leaguers. You got Cub Scouts. You got Hornsby went by. <laughs> it is a big night here at uh, One Oak Field. They were here early this morning. and It was yes. quite a scene. It was rocking, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. First on a Brady Street could see some big changes coming its way. That depends on how a city council meeting goes tonight. The public will get its say before the council could possibly vote to change the name as part debate in recent months. Channel 8's Caitlin Alexander is live down at City Hall this evening with the latest. Caitlin. All right, thanks, Caitlin. Changing the street signs would affect 30 different intersections. In other news tonight, the bitter custody battle over a three-year-old girl doesn't appear to be over despite a court ruling. South Carolina's Supreme Court ordered the adoption of a little girl known as Baby Veronica to be finalized. Man and Melanie Capobianco legally adopted her before the birth father asserted his custody rights. A couple thought the fight was over, but as Mark Davenport reports, they still don't have Veronica. The court order to immediately return Veronica to the Capobiancos was sent to the Charleston County Solicitor's Office and the U.S. Attorney's Office. In a statement, the U.S. Attorney's Office says they have received the order and are consulting with state and federal federal law enforcement to determine the appropriate next steps. Meanwhile, the Cherokee Nation says they, along with Brown, will appear next Wednesday in a South Carolina family court to discuss pending motions. Former Tulsa police officer convicted of stealing from Hispanics is sentenced to 35 years in prison. Marvin Blaze Jr. was charged with five counts of armed robbery. Blaze was accused of pulling over Hispanic drivers, taking cash from their wallets and telling them to drive off. One of the victims was actually an undercover narcotics agent. The Blades had waived his right to a jury trial. Police make a peeping Tom arrest inside a South Tulsa store. 22-year-old Brian Heck was booked yesterday after getting caught in the Target store at 101st and Memorial. They say he used a small camera to spy on women inside the dressing room. A woman trying to unclose noticed the camera at the top of the stall and alerted security. Bond for Heck was $10,000. Well, it was put in place to make Tulsa a greener city and encourage its citizens to recycle. But now the city's green waste removal program is being questioned by many, including Mayor Bartlett. 
Channel 8's Ethan Calloway reports many feel they've been kept in the dark about problems with the program. Will your child have enough teachers when school begins? With just 14 days until the start, Tulsa Public Schools are looking for 92 instructors. Channel 8's Kim Jackson talked to the principal at one school that started today. When we come back, plans to move a historic bridge along Route 66. Plus, snake bites are on the rise here in the Sooner State. Find out why and which snakes are most likely to strike. Smoke billowed from the top of an Oklahoma City coffee shop today. Neighbors' coffee caught fire just before 11 this morning near 11th and Broadway. No serious injuries have been reported there. Investigators say it appears a coffee roaster at the top of the building may have sparked that blaze. City of Catoosa is planning on moving part of history. The old Rice Street Bridge spans Route 66 and has been closed for a couple years now. The bridge is too small for modern day cars and needs repair. ODOT plans to replace it eventually, but the old structure won't be demolished. City plans to reuse it. Well, keep a close eye on your ankles. The number of snake bites is climbing here in the Sooner State. According to the Oklahoma Poison Control, snake bites have increased between January and August for the past three years. So far this year, 142 people have been bitten by snakes, and this time last year was 126. Most common snake bites in Oklahoma is from the Copperhead. Rattlesnakes are the second most common. Experts are blaming the weather, more rain, and cooler temperatures. Another round of storms potentially early next week. You know, we usually want rain this time of year, but not now, right? Not now. Everybody's getting a serious workout outside having to mow that grass, so yeah. I think everybody wants a little break. Enough's enough. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Thanks, Tamper. All right. PJ Championship is underway in New York. Find out where Tiger stands after the first round coming up after the break. Kickoff. It's at 7 o'clock. You asked me if the Rams are going to win the Super Bowl. No, neither are the Browns. So I'll just no, go ahead and yeah. take care of that. Yeah. Good, good guess. Yeah, All right, yeah. thank you. More rain tonight? We do. Uh, we have some strong to severe thunderstorms down to the south between McAllister, Stigler. That's the area we're watching right now. Very heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and lightning. A big concern. Mm. All right, thanks. That's our news tonight. Thanks for watching. Wheel Fortune up next. We'll see you tomorrow. Sorry for this, but it's really coming down right now. I want to tell you a quick story. I met a woman about an hour ago. She was trapped in a medical building just on the other side of the street from this is St. John Hospital. We've heard a lot about and seen about. She was trapped there for 30 minutes and she saw a hole in the ceiling where she could uh, wave some insulation and some kids saw her and rescued her. And today she said, I'm still looking for my car. It's nowhere in the parking lot and it could be anywhere. Just uh, another example how powerful this storm was yesterday. Chuck? Well, Mark, if you look at the sort of the developed part of Joplin there, it's hard to get an overview. Uh, the areas that have been badly damaged, 20, 30, 40 percent of the city, can you put a, a quantity on it for us? Well, I've heard from an official 30 percent of Joplin has had significant or major damage. Now, if you just go a little ways this way, there's no, no problem. You know, there's no damage at all. And, and you can tell where the, uh, the tornado skipped over and went over some trees. The tops of the trees are off, but the houses are fine. So you can tell where the tornado skipped over the houses and went on. But there's like a mile wide of destruction and several miles long. So anywhere you look where we are right now, I call this ground zero. Um, there is destruction everywhere here, Chuck. A trip to the grocery store, fun for a few, but for many others, a chore. A dreaded chore after one look at that grocery bill. Okay, we need, oh, there are eggs over there. Okay, well, we're almost done, okay? Don't worry. Hannah Middleburg spends about $300 a month buying groceries for her family of five, which includes her three little boys. Like many Americans, she liked to cut back on her grocery budget. I'm always looking for ways to save, yeah. We, we do coupons. Saving money on that trip to the grocery store takes more than just cutting out coupons. That certainly helps. But if you're really serious about cutting your grocery budget, it takes a little planning and strategy. Betty Casey, editor of Tulsa Kids Magazine, says there are three common mistakes shoppers like Middlebrook can make that hike their grocery bill. The first, shopping while hungry. Do you ever shop hungry? Very rarely. Yeah, it's not wise for me. <laughs> Everything looks good when our stomachs are screaming, feed me. But Casey says that definitely influences not only how much we buy, but what we buy. You may end up with some prepackaged things, some high fat things, some high sugar items that you had not planned on buying. And just because you're hungry and they're quick and easy to, to eat, uh, you may end up buying, buying more than you expect to buy. 
Next on the list, it can cost you more at the grocery store, too many trips. Even kids pick up on that one. We used to wait in the car for ages for you when you said you were just getting some milk. You'd go, you'd wait in the car with Daddy, that's right, and I'd go in for a thing of milk and I'd come out with all these bags. That jug of milk can end up costing you $30. Casey has a simple solution to that. Don't take the whole cart in. Don't even take a carry-on because you'll end up grabbing a few extra things as you go through the aisle and you'll end up spending a few extra dollars that you hadn't intended on spending just because you see something that might look good. And number three on the don't do this or you'll pay more list, don't take the kids. Come here, kiddo. Elliot, I'd like you to help me. Somebody walking through. Sorry. I understand. I think that's probably a good idea not to run into people. You think I'm going to get that? <laughs> I don't think so. When we take our kids to the store, a lot of times we end up just giving in and buying things we don't need or want. Should we get some fruit? But what if you have to take the kids? Casey says prepare your children before the trip. Maybe saying, you know, you can choose between these two types of cereal when you get to the cereal aisle. Or you, we're going to buy these things and you help me look for it. Middleburg takes it a step further. 19 ounces, how much does that cost? Jonah? She teaches her boys how to be smart and healthy shoppers. Does it tell you what the serving size is up here? What sodium, can you remember? 89 cents. Are they okay? And there are other ways to avoid paying too much of the grocery store. Watch the price scanner. Mistakes are common. Only use coupons for items you normally use. And buy generic or store brands if you can. If you're really thoughtful in what you do, you could, you, to, you could save $100 or more on your budget a month. We've got everything. Making your trip to the grocery store not nearly as expensive and far less dreaded. I'm Mark Bradshaw. That's money coverage you can count on.